With today's Schubert Lab delving into the inner chemistry of Schubert's music, here's Tom Service. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, welcome to the first of today's three Schubert Labs. As ever, three essential investigations into the key crucial questions of Schubert's life and music. Today on The Spirit of Schubert is Classical or Romantic Day, so let's hear today's lab project, our question for today, if you please. This is your Schubert Lab project today. Schubert, classical or romantic? Was he either, neither or both? Well, it kind of does what it says on the tin, that question, but I think it's going to reveal some some kind of real mysteries about Schubert's life and music. With me uh, this morning to get to the heart of this are the pianist and accompanist Roger Vignoles and composer Robin Holloway, who, among many, many other works, has uh, completed, reorchestrated, and reimagined Schubert. So I suppose, really, a very simple question to both of you first. Um, how do you respond to that? Is he classical, romantic, either, neither, or both, uh, Robin Holloway? Well, his classical by training, his classical by when he lived, all his early instrumental music is seeped in Haydn and Mozart, string quartets, symphonies, piano sonatas, but that's only the start of it. Roger Vignoles. Well, yes, uh, I mean, I'm prompted, I'm tempted to say that uh, when, as soon as you ask that question, um, it has to be remembered that the romantic movement in literature and theatre and art began uh, actually um, much earlier than the Romantic movement in the, the, as we categorise it. I mean, during the period of which we call classical music, so um, uh, Mozart and Haydn, um, Goethe and Schiller uh, were already pioneering mm. the, the whole sort of Romantic um, uh, Interest and interest in Shakespeare and so on, and Schubert, um, who was uh, very aware of what was happening in the literary world, inevitably was drawn to um, uh, to, to romantic things, and therefore um, he was thinking in a, a romantic sense. You see, both of you, I mean, I think that the, the, it's worth remembering that, that Schubert was a pupil of Salieri. He was kind of obsessed by Gluck when he was growing up. But, but Robin, Robin, it's, it's the sense that what the, when he starts thinking about poetry, just as you said, Roger, and Roger, you are at the piano, we're going to be hearing things soon. Um, Robin, the, 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 the songs and the poetry opens up uh, a, a world of imagination, which, well, we may have to call it romantic, but it could even go further than that. What, what, what's, what's your take on that, Robin? Well, what's clear, I think, is that there were no models for these songs. Uh, 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 song, so, song was formal, stanzaic. Um, so it was ver always uh, just about verses until Schubert came along. Well, Schubert is about the verses too, but, 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 the, but there's a new relationship between image and text and the music born of it, which I think makes him something quite extraordinary. I can only link it a unhistorically to Bach before him and Wagner after him. They, they're, they're all masters of imagery born of music that then makes the total musical momentum. You see, so really we have to, we have to completely kind of blow this question apart and yes. say Schubert, yeah. Schubert goes back to the Baroque and he's looking forward to the late romantics and maybe later. Roger, yeah, let, well, let's as, then... And as soon as you start to talk about imagery, um, you have to recognise that um, the birth of the piano was an in incredibly important catalyst because Schubert recognised what you could do on the piano, which is to Im imitate an orchestra, to create, as it were, um, a theatrical scene um, just on a keyboard. Roger, then, look, you brought along some examples to, to, to show how this imagination sort of blasts these boundaries apart. Yeah. Let, let, well, let's hear I mean, a, a, an early song and probably one of the most popular in Schubert's life Der Wanderer. The Wanderer, yeah. Um, we were thinking about it yesterday a bit, actually. Just, so just in the introduction, um, you can hear, um, imagine a theatrical scene, a rocky landscape, the dry ice um, coming up, um, and a hooded, shrouded, uh, cloaked figure um, stalks onto the stage. And this is what you hear. The 
you can, you can feel the chill of that uh, liquid nitrogen uh, in, 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 <laughs> um, uh, from the piano as you're playing, Roger. It's absolutely, um, uh, he's creating a, an atmosphere within which this poem can exist. And uh, that's a long way away from what was being done by any other uh, right. of his Right, I mean, that's the point, Robin. It's, it's miles away from, from anything that was going on at the same time. Yes, it's very interesting why he should fail at opera, isn't it, when he's got a, a very powerful gift of question, characterization. question we'll be addressing directly at 3 o'clock in our second lab today. Well, indeed, yes, but I mean, let me preempt it slightly. You know, he's got a wonderful gift of characterization. He's got a wonderful gift of atmosphere setting. But something is not he hasn't got which takes an operatic composer that's for later today <laughs> uh, roger another example of uh, uh, that that shows how yeah that, that what Schubert what Schubert is doing with the piano and with our and with our imaginations well um th what i find is fascinating is is that uh he is both um learning from operatic examples um you you mentioned that he was he was keen on gluck obviously he was aware of mozart and um here he's actually uh, uh playing like an orchestra um mm. there are clear examples that actually look ahead to wagner um, <laughs> let's, let's have, let's another have famous listen. song the earl König. i'll play it in a particular key for a particular reason <laughs> beginning of Wagner's Valkyra goes like this. So. And so on. Um, what is the link? A skullduggery at the crossroads or something. But certainly um, there is a clear line in the language here. And then there's another, um, even more, to me, uh, fascinating example is uh, the song towards the end of Winterreise, Die Nebensonnen, which is a cosmic apparition of three suns in the sky. It's an astronomical uh, phenomenon, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Hear the scoring. The only instruments you could score it for are horns brass and, yeah. instruments, horns, or even Wagner tubas. <laughs> and there is another glowing you see, vision the, in the, the, the sky. The, the Wagner's the Valhalla, Valhalla motif from from the whole Ring Cycle, exactly. which Schubert has no way preempted. So Robin Holloway, I mean, there we are. You know, no Schubert, no Wagner, or you know, with that imaginative window, that sense of what music can do. Couldn't have been if it hadn't been opened by Schubert, Wagner wouldn't have been there. I think that's right, and I'm not sure if this is correct historically, but it's correct in a in a larger sense. I think uh, they he, they are composers of the same type, and Virgil Thompson once called Wagner leader louder. <laughs> and that wi that wicked <laughs> phrase has got a lot of truth in it. And whether or not uh, Wagner knew his way in and in and about the Schubert leader, yeah. they are composers of the same type. The um, uh, Robin, you've got uh, one other thing, which is perhaps even I mean it was unexpected. Composers you might not think of in this in the same breath: Schubert and Debussy. Goodness, well I think over to you, Roger, with <laughs> with your fascinating example. Yes. Well, um, Die Stadt, uh, also from uh, Schwanengesang. A small um, interpolation which from is, a uh, little bit of contemporary I'm technology. sorry, let's this is my phone going. That's fine. Um, let's let, let, <laughs> let's play, play as Die Stadt. I, I want us to have in our imagination, this will be our last example, the, 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 the sense of ju just play the opening of Die Stadt and we'll think of Debussy here. How about that for a pregnant way to, to end uh, to today's first lab? That sense of the, the what the Schubert is doing with musical language, what he's doing with the piano, thinking about Claude Debussy over a century later. We may even be able to go further. Classic, romantic, Schubert, he's postmodern, he's modern, he's Baroque as well. Uh, Ro Roger Vignos, Robin Holloway, thank you very much. This is your Schubert Lab too. Here's how to get in touch. The Schubert Lab with Tom Service. Email schubert at bbc.co.uk or text 83111.
Well, thanks again to Roger Vignoles at the piano and Robin Holloway. Uh, more from the lab at three o'clock, opera, and more again in the in tune Schubert Salon. Uh, in tune Schubert Salon. I really must pr- uh, practice that um, at quarter to six. Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom and Robin and Roger, for uh, conjuring up a very colourful picture.